Welcome to the unboxing of the AOC G2460 PF. On the front of the box, we can see one millisecond response time, 144 hertz, display port, USB hub, and adjustable stand. We can also see the monitor's name, size, as well as AMD FreeSync and its logo. On the side, we have the same information. On the other side, it is also the same. Nothing at the bottom and the same information at the top. The back is just about the same as the front. But let's uh, have a look what's inside. There are some instructions on the inside cover on the box. A regular AC cord. Software driver with a 3.5 millimeter jack. As we can see right there. As well as a clip for the monitor stand. We have a display port cable and a VGA cable as well. Here we can see the monitor stand. And we also have a USB cable for the hub. Let's have a look at the monitor itself. column comes pre-attached to the monitor and is placed at a sideways angle. As you can see, it turns downwards to accommodate the stand and is attached via the VESA mounting. On the front of the monitor, it's pretty simple. FreeSync 144Hz logo. On the left side we have nothing, nothing at the top. On the right side we have two USB ports. And on the bottom we have the power button and the menu. Here we can see the input connections, both audio and visual and power and USB connections. Hello and welcome to a quick review on the AOC G2460 PF. Now first things first, this monitor was sent to me by gamers.com.mt through AOC Gaming. Unfortunately, the first monitor that arrived was damaged in transit. Thank you, UPS. 
uh, but we quickly got another one. Now, I've been trying this for the best part of a week now, uh, just about, I think it was a week, uh, maybe a bit less, and uh, I have to say, pretty much liking uh, the experience so far. So let's go over uh, the basics. It is a full HD monitor, so 1080p, and it runs on 144 hertz. Now we have uh, as far as input uh, connections go, we have a VGA, a dual link DVI, a display port, and an HDMI port, so lots of options there. Although here I am using the uh, display port why? Because this monitor supports FreeSync and I happen to have an AMD card and a machine. So I'm running my uh, R9 to 90 with uh, FreeSync enabled at 144 hertz. It is also important to note that this monitor has a one millisecond response time. Let's start with the things that personally I don't really like. Now this might not be a good deal. But there is, uh, apart from the black brushed finish here, which is really, really nice, there is a red uh, bar passing across where the LED is and uh, where the uh, menu buttons are on. The problem is that I like to color match and as you can see, I'm going with a different theme. So that might be a bit, uh, of putting if you are color matching. I mean, it's not really a, a big deal other than that. It's not really noticeable if you're playing a game, if you're browsing or anything. So I can't really complain about that. It's just purely an aesthetic criticism. It is a 24 inch monitor. It uses 100 by 100 standard VESA mountings, which I'm using right here. I'm not using the stand quick few points about the stand it is height adjustable and the spring in it is quite strong it's strong enough that you can't even uh, push it easily just by using your hand so you need a, a large surface as the monitor itself to be able to uh, height adjust it also has the clip which we've seen during the unboxing which clips around the stand just around uh, the bottom of the stand at the back that way you can uh, have your cables passing through and not have a mess of uh, cables just from all over the place. Things to note, this is a twisted pneumatic panel which would be referenced as a TN panel. What is the difference between this type of panel and other types of panel? If it were an IPS, you would get uh, accurate color rendition from any viewing angle. With this, if you change your viewing angle, say you're slightly to the side or above or below, the color rendition may be a bit off. Admittedly, it wasn't as bad with this monitor. It was the first thing I checked and I was surprised. I mean, you can't take extreme angles. With IPS, you can be at an extreme angle and you can still see the exact same colors as you were in front of it. With this, that's not going to happen but even if i stay to the side of it or to this side maybe a bit uh, above or below if it's not extreme the colors are just fine i wasn't able to test this monitor with my calibrator unfortunately it doesn't support this type of monitor but if i had to give my honest opinion uh, the color rendition is really really good i was surprised that it would be this good it's sitting right next to one of my ips panels albeit an older ips panel but the colors are quite nice the thing that took me by surprise the most is the brightness of this panel as you can see on the camera the brightness here is quite good and that is at zero brightness i had to reduce it it comes out of the box with a preset that's quite higher, I had to reduce it. Zero brightness is quite comfortable for me. I like being in dark settings when uh, on my PC, so if it's night, it's going to be dark in the room. And if it's too bright, that will be a bit of uh, discomfort for me. So zero brightness has been good day and night. As you can see, it's daylight. Maybe it's not as bright because there are the blinds on, but even with the blinds up, uh, this monitor has proven to be quite fine when it comes to 
uh, brightness even in sunlight. So free sync and 144 hertz. There was a bit of a problem when I first started using this monitor. I couldn't use the display port. I thought it may be something from my PC because I wouldn't doubt the monitor. And it turned out that actually it was the display port cable. Now this is a monitor that has uh, display port 1.2, which the R9290 supports but it couldn't be detected with the DisplayPort cable. With an HDMI cable and with a DVI cable, it was fine. Uh, what I did, I ended up trying one of my own uh, DisplayPort cables and it is working right now on that cable. So I think it would have more likely been a case of having a faulty uh, DisplayPort cable. Nothing to the fault of AOC, which would of course not supply a cable that wouldn't work on their own monitor for the features that this monitor has actually marketed for. Once I set it to 144 hertz, the experience is just amazing. Even browsing, you want to use this monitor. Going back to a lower refresh rate monitor from a higher refresh, refresh rate monitor is day and night. You will not enjoy using a 60 hertz panel after you've tried something like this. And if I had to mention games, I've played a few games on this monitor. It is really, really, really smooth, if you can hit the frame rates, of course. And I was absolutely amazed that something which is marketed as an entry level 1440 hertz monitor would do as well as this. If you're looking for a 144 hertz monitor, there are some things you need to know. If you cannot drive 144 FPS or higher in games, this is not something you need to be looking to buy. You need to be able to drive the frame rate. There are a few things you can do to be able to achieve the frame rate that this monitor requires. You can either reduce the game settings, so graphic settings set to lower than they usually would be. Remember that if you're coming from 60 hertz to 144 hertz and you're running at 60 FPS, you need to more than double that. So you need to reduce your settings. You could also upgrade to a faster card, which is of course not always the option. But if you're running this kind of monitor, I'd assume you would be wanting to run something that's more powerful than would be for a normal monitor. Is this monitor for you? If you're looking into getting into smoother gaming and higher frame rates, this is one of the cheapest monitors you can buy. It retails at gamers.com.mt at 285 euros. And I think for that money, this is a very good buy if you're looking into getting this kind of gaming without spending a lot of money. Thanks for watching this review on the AOC G2460PF 144Hz monitor. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care.